and I will continue to say this with every wrap up that I film, how is it June? This is unacceptable. Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and this is Nigel. I hope you can hear me okay, I'm congested. Andrew gave me germs and so I didn't wanna film this but I need to film this because this might be the earliest I'll ever get a wrap up. up. But that is the point of today's video to wrap up all of the books that I read in May. Uh, so Nigel and I wanna tell you about the books we read did you read them or did I read them? Okay. So the hair, mm, I knew this going into it, there was gonna be a struggle part and we're struggling. So just pretend you only see Nigel cause I'm in a baggy shirt and I'm tired and uh, whatever, you're here for the books, right? Um, so let's talk about the books that I read in May. <laughs> but first, I would like to shout out Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. And so Surfshark is a VPN, a virtual private network. So I've used Surfshark since we moved here in July 2019 because I'm in a foreign country and I wanted to access Hulu and US Netflix, et cetera, et cetera. And so I got it. I thought it was a great price. It's worked great. You can get one account and use it on multiple devices. It's on Andrew's Xbox, both our phones, iPads, tablets, et cetera. But then when uh, they reached out, <laughs> they were like, oh, look at all these other things Surfshark is good for. I only cared about watching TV, but there's all these benefits. Like if you're on a public Wi-Fi network, it protects you and your information. Um, you can set up where you get alerts if someone like hacks into your email. There are many benefits to having Surfshark as your VPN and it's a really affordable service. And if you use my code, which is just my last name, Owens, that's O-W-E-N-S, you can get 83% off, which is kind of wild. And also a free three months of service. There's like a 30 day money back guarantee. I don't think you'll need to use that because it's already super cheap and it works really well. Again, one account, multiple devices, you can access out of network or out of country websites and apps. So again, my code is my last name, Owens, O-W-E-N-S. You can get 83% off the regular price for Surfshark. I have a link down below along with my code. So thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. So the first book that I finished was What We Don't Talk About, We Talk About Fat, which I included in my last nonfiction wrap up, but it's by Aubrey Gordon, who writes on the internet as your fat friend. And so it's part memoir but then kind of like social commentary sociology of fat people particularly in America and uh, she talks about like the fat liberation movement and what that means for people who are fat and people who aren't um, I learned a lot from this book if you want to hear more about it I'd watch that wrap up but I do recommend it and she is on a, a podcast with her friend and it's called maintenance phase and they basically go through trends and fads in the wellness industry and kind of debunk them and it's really good so I'll have the podcast linked as well then I read Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard this was the arc that I read and this is the first in her new series so I never read Red Queen um, I know there's mixed feelings on that some people really loved it some people didn't but I never read it so so Harper Teen sent this has an advanced reader copy which was really exciting so Realm Breaker is very much a found family story and so there's like an assassin an immortal a witch um like a squire there's a, there's a bunch of people and who all come together basically to sell, save the realm because the story starts out where these people the good guys are fighting against these basically demon things that came from another realm but they lose all but like two of them survive and so they go on to carry the news to other people in their realm trying to you know muster people to come to their aid and so they have to band together to try to save the realm because like big kingdoms with big armies don't believe them and don't want to help them so they take it upon themselves to go on this journey essentially to try to save the realm is kind of what happens. I did like it. The assassin was not assassinating and y'all know how I feel about that. Like there were a couple instances in the beginning but then after that there was no assassinating. And I'm like, why y'all? I don't know why they do that to me. 
I felt like it was too long and in the length there wasn't enough character development was something that really fell flat for me and why I like couldn't connect to it as much as I would have liked because y'all know I love the found family trope and uh, so hopefully that gets better in the next book. I did say in the review I wrote on Goodreads that I was interested in reading the next one because it is interesting. Um, I do like that whole like deep good versus evil realm thing like there's other portals into our world and we have to keep them closed to keep those demons over there and there was like an interesting twist in one of the people and what side they start on and what side they go to that I really liked so overall I think it was a good story and I'm hoping in the next one it's just more focused and more uh development with the characters but I am willing to give it a try then I read <laughs> A Lesson in Thorns by Sierra Simone. I had heard about this book years ago, a couple years ago. I think everybody on booktube was reading it. And it is so erotica? Is that what it's characterized as? Well, you have a story that starts out with these young kids and there's just like a chapter, like a prologue of them when they're young and then it flashes forward to the present when they're in like their mid 20s. So Poe is a librarian, she's the main character and she is living in the States. Like they're all living kind of in different places. Some of them live closer to each other, some live further away. And there's something that brings them all back together to this house as adults. And things have happened between some of them where they're not getting along, there's, you know, certain history or past or things they have gone through and she is here because since they came back from the house as a child like her mother went missing and so she's hoping she can find something to find her mom or find out what happened to her and in the process of this she's you know remembering all of this stuff that happened in her childhood with these people and now they're doing different things as adults and they they plan to have like this whole ritual thing because the house has a lot of history and basically it's like a sex ritual and I went into this not really knowing how I was gonna like it and I really enjoyed it um but I will say that people on Goodreads are like this book is filthy it's so dirty the sex and I will say this was not filthy okay there were a lot of dirty thoughts but there was a not enough on page and it is a more like bdsm kind of book like poe is a sub and another one of the characters is a dom so like if you don't like that i definitely wouldn't read it but to me it was this whole thing about the ritual that we learn about in, like the first 20 percent of the book and then we're waiting and it's building up to wait for that ritual to happen and it doesn't happen towards the end of the book and then there's like a cliffhanger and i was like the fuck um that regards like the mystery part which i actually was interested in but as for on page it's more like lusting and like maybe they have a moment of like passionate kisses or something and then they pull apart and I'm like uh-uh I want to see it I want it on page so I didn't think this book was super filthy it could have been like way more and I would have been here for it but I still really liked it and I want to read the next one although multiple people have a have advised me not to because of a certain ah uh, not great trope that's in the next one but I'm gonna read it and see it for myself <laughs> so anyway I really like that book um no actually like I really loved it <laughs> okay. I read the bromance the bromance book club by Lisa K Adams so I had heard about this one this has been out for a while there's multiple books in this series now and the premise of there's men in this they're professional baseball players and they have a secret book club where they read romance books to learn how to better you know understand women and treat them in their relationships which I think is such a cute idea which sounds like such a cute idea and such a good premise and the main character in this he finds out that his wife has been faking orgasms and so they end up split apart and he gets invited into the bromance book club my issue with this i had multiple i never found a connection to any of the characters um the main guy i liked more than the woman she was so annoying her sister was annoying like she didn't admit she didn't take responsibility for her fault and the problems with their marriage because there was more than just the issues with their sex life and she just like would take no responsibility for that and I hated it and then the bromance book club while that was like I love that idea I did not like the execution because I listened to the audiobook 
and the story included excerpts of like the book the main character was reading which was a historical romance and I didn't want to hear excerpts of that book in the book I was listening to so I would usually skip past that because I didn't care and then the conversations the men would have was just so real unrealistic you could tell that a woman was really was you could tell a woman wrote this and was like really trying to drive home that these men are just like so different and feminist because of reading these romance things. Their conversations just didn't feel authentic. They felt really stilted and they felt really scripted. And I never felt like any of them were real people. Uh, again with the main character she had all these issues from how her father treated her mom and her and her sister both didn't want to like deal with those problems and her sister even when the main character <laughs> the main character was like trying to work through things and trying to forgive her husband her sister was like no how dare you give in to that man and blah 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 and she was just the worst and I just enjoyed nothing about the story really like I gave it two stars I don't even know why it was just meh. Then we read The Maidens by Alex Michaelides, which I got from Celadon Books as an advanced reader copy. So I did not like The Silent Patient. I read it after so many people had hyped it up. They're like, oh my God, it's like the best thriller I've read in years. Oh my God, twists and turns. I thought The Silent Patient was boring and I saw it all coming and I was like, whatever. So I wanted to read this one mainly because of the cover but also the premise and it's essentially set at Cambridge and you have a group therapist and a group of girls who are really close with the professor at Cambridge and they call themselves the maidens and I was like mm, that sounds intriguing so this was giving me proper dark academia vibes so I appreciated that the main character she lost her husband in like a swimming accident but she's gone back to work and her niece is at Cambridge and some her niece calls her because one of her friends is missing so she goes to Cambridge unfortunately she was killed and then she finds out about like this group that the niece uh, niece's friend was a part of the maidens and so of course they're looking at that professor to be the one because she was in his group but there are many people presented in the story where you're like no it's them no it's him no it's them no it's them no it's him like where I was like okay this chapter is making me think it's this person I'm like wait no maybe it's this person so I really like that that it kept me like guessing and there was somebody I swore it was and they ended up not being and I was like what and then even towards the end where it was like okay yeah I know who it's gonna be there still were like there were still surprises like even if the the end of the who did it wasn't a complete surprise I liked the build up and how we got there the setting was perfection just Cambridge and, and talking about them in their little what do they call them punts their little boats on the water and you know just like if it was like cloudy outside or um there was lots of fog like it with the atmosphere was mwah. and then the story was also interesting because you get some of her past and then how that ties into the beginning and then really how it wrapped up i was like what now the why i kind of was like ah but i just went with it and then it ends on like this i'm like that's it I need I need like five more pages of explanation anyway I really enjoyed it did I give it a four star I at least gave it a four star if not four and a half it was really good I thought it was excellent way better than the silent patient so I think if you like the silent patient you'll probably like this one what boo boo are you tired oh my gosh look at all your eye boogers these people probably think I don't take care of my baby I read detransition baby by Tori Peters which I mentioned in a T video because it ha it was long listed for the woman's prize and you know people were mad whatever I don't think it made it to the short list though so Tori Peters is a trans woman and so I think this is one of the first or at least one of the few uh, books published by a trans woman that was picked up by a major publisher and so Detransition Baby what I had heard about it before I read it and what wanted made me and what made me want to read it was that it was about a trans woman and then another trans woman but who had detransitioned and was dating a cis woman and got the cis woman pregnant and so the story was supposed to be like about that and kind of how they all had some weird relationship 
around raising a baby. And I thought it was a really interesting premise because I would like more stories with just like non-traditional relationships and non-traditional familial structures. So I thought that sounded really interesting. So Reese is the trans woman and Amy, and now Ames. So Amy was a trans woman, then detransitioned, now is going by Ames, and then Ames is dating, I can't remember their girlfriend's name, the cis woman. So it was more about Reese and Ames past lovers hookups relationships than it was in the present. And like, it also jumped back and forth between the present and the past often and not it wasn't always clear to me where we were and in whose story we were so sometimes that was confusing i started out reading the ebook and then i switched to the audio which i found was better for me um i think that um i read other people's reviews and stuff too because i just didn't know how to feel when i finished it because like i said i went in for more of like thought there was gonna be this like you know, non-traditional familial structure of them raising this baby because essentially Ames is struggling with having detransitioned but still feeling like a woman. Um, and Reese wants a child and can't have one, you know. And so <sighs> Ames is wanting to include Reese in this because Ames doesn't feel like they can be like a father figure, but know that if they had themselves and Reese, who's always wanted to be a mother, plus the baby mama, like they could all somehow provide everything this child would need. And I really wanted to see that play out. And you don't get that much. Like you still get to learn about, you know, their relationship and how she got pregnant and how they made their decisions going forward and how she felt when Ames brought up that he wanted to bring in Reese. So those parts were all, all really interesting, but it definitely focused just more on their relationships. And for a while, some of it did make me uncomfortable because it's just very blunt and upfront with its language and just different words that Tori Peters uses. And I think that's just to say like I'm writing this book as a trans woman and like I'm not going to soften the blow or I'm not going to um change who I am or who our community is or how we talk or what terms we use for other readers and I became more comfortable with it as I kept reading some things I did have to google to like like what does that mean but that's a part of reading you have to learn different things um so that was definitely a learning curve for me in that book and then also I thought some of the conversations were interesting <clears throat> another thing was that it showed I don't know it just showed real life and it wasn't a picture perfect story and parts were messy and parts were funny and parts were hard and I think I don't know what Tori was intending but I think that was kind of the point to show these different things that they go that trans uh, people go through and trans women and parts that were really that really stuck out to me were when Reese were just talking was just talking about how much she wanted to be a mother and people would always ask like why does she want to be a mother and it's like well you don't ask cis women that like why do I have to prove why I want to be a mother so I thought those were really great conversations so I do think it's a good read it just is different because I don't read a lot of like literary fiction so I had to get re used to like the writing style but I think if you can like get past the first 10 15 percent and really get into it and again I thought the audio was good then it would be um, a worthwhile read. Elliot Brooks from the channel Elliot Brooks told me about this book Evicted by Matthew Desmond and so we buddy read it and it was one of the most <clears throat> excuse me one of the most heartbreaking books I've ever read and so it's about like eviction in America but it's focused in um Milwaukee I'm pretty sure uh, but this applies I'm sure to America wide and it's so heartbreaking um I definitely want to talk about it more in detail but it just explores landlords and how much power they have and how people how easy it is for people in poverty to be kicked out of their homes and how much money people can make from people being poor and just the ridiculous rules and laws that exist like they can rent homes that aren't up to code and shady things landlords do and how often it is 
women who are in these situations and especially black women and just oh my god i just would have to stop reading sometimes because it just broke my heart how desperate these people were in situations and looking for housing and how often the housing they could find wasn't safe it wasn't up to code it wasn't clean it's not in a good area so angel it was so sad like it was one of the saddest things i've ever read i don't want to talk about it anymore right now all right then i read the trouble with hating you by sajni patel so the main character leah is from like a traditional family but she doesn't want to be traditional she doesn't want to get married especially not an arranged marriage she's like really smart and successful lives on her own instead of with her parents um you know buys expensive things takes care of herself but she has a past trauma of sexual assault so trigger warning for that that happened when she was younger but her dad believes and sides with her abuser she still has a decent relationship with her mom but not with her dad and so occasionally she goes to like i don't know what it's called their place of worship i can't remember exactly what it was called for like you know events and family events and stuff like that but she's not very active like she was when she had to be when she was younger and then there's jay and so he his mom is very um traditional too but like not to the extreme like leah's parents and his dad unfortunately died when he was younger and so leah is going to dinner with her parents or so, so she thinks and she so shows up and there's jay and his mother because of course her parents want to set her up with him and she's like caught off guard and she just like storms out so of course everyone's flustered and mad and they don't know what happened and then she goes to work the next day because her job's going through like all these issues and lawsuits and he's the new lawyer that's there to try to help them get out of these lawsuits so she's like i just met you last night and now you're here at my job and he comes off as an asshole to her and so that's how the relationship starts so i did really enjoy like their banter and their attitude towards each other um I, I didn't like that there were so many mentions of like name brands like i just didn't care but whatever um and then as it progressed like i was really enjoying the story but it went she just stayed stubborn for so long that it became kind of annoying to me i was like dang girl he keeps she keeps saying you know to herself all these reasons why she can't believe he's a good guy or she can't let him in but he's constantly not just telling her but showing her that he is about his word and he's a good man and, Nigel stop it stop it <laughs> and she just keeps not listening and I just get so frustrated like I understand to a point but at some point I'm like girl let him in damn like he's just he keeps he's not just saying he keeps proving to you that he's about his word that he is actually this kind and i was just getting frustrated so overall i mean i really did like the story it just took her too long to come around um but trigger warnings for the trauma um i just love how the main the the hero handled it and uh I loved that the third act wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It was handled differently. So I still really enjoyed it, but you know, it had a few hang ups for me. So I read Too Good, wait, Too Sweet to Be Good by K.M. Jackson, um, which I thought was going to be a bakery romance. And I have a reading vlog that'll talk more about this, but it was the a bakery was like a big part of the story like a setting but the main two characters were really working on like a renovation project so she is down south in this little town in georgia helping her family her aunt runs this bakery and her sister's also working there and then he his grandmother is like a staple in the town and he lives in atlanta but he is back in the little town because his grandparents own a theater his grandfather recently died and he's trying to get his grandmother to sell a theater and so the grandmother wants to work with the main character alex um because alex also likes to do like interior design to redesign the theater to open it up and the grandson callan kellen or kellen wants to sell it and so they kind of end up working on like this renovation project together and that's how it goes from there but i don't want to talk too much about it because i talk about it in a reading vlog but i mean i liked it i didn't love it i wasn't really sold on the romance i was more into the family element of the story but you should check out that reading vlog whenever i put it up <laughs> another one that'll be in that reading vlog is monday is not coming by tiffany d jackson i've had this on my my list for a long time and finally read it i read it in like two sittings it was 
so good so the main character claudia is in eighth grade i think or going into eighth grade every summer she goes down south to stay with her grandmother her best friend monday stays in dc where they live and they usually write letters back and forth to each other so the story starts out with monday getting back from georgia and being like hey i haven't heard from monday all summer and her mom's like oh i'm sure you know there's a good excuse she doesn't hear from monday you know she's like well i'm sure you'll see her at school goes to school monday's still not there she's asking teachers she's asking um monday's siblings she's asking all these people and no one seems to care and no one seems to really understand that monday is missing except for claudia and we kind of go through that and so there's multiple timelines that kind of jump around in like the present and then like the past and the past past and the chapters are really short which is amazing because it just like kept the story going really quickly and i just kept being like where's monday what happened to monday and it was such a heartbreaking story so i'm going to talk about more of that in the blog but true warning for child abuse <sighs> abuse a lot of abuse in my last two books I read um, on the drives <laughs> so we flew to Milan and then we drove to Switzerland because it was cheaper and less time because oddly a lot of the flights even if they were only two and a half three hours they had layovers so anyway on the drive it was a three hour drive from Milan to Interlaken I wrote I read Rafe a buff male nanny by Rebecca Witherspoon in one of my live streams my recent one I think someone recommended this I can't remember who thank you to whoever it was because I loved every second of this my only complaint was it was too short I when it went to like epilogue I was like oh, how dare you how dare you so we have Dr. Sloan and she's a black woman she has two twin girls she's divorced from her husband who lives in Seattle she has moved down to LA and then we have Rafe who is a professional male nanny and he's really great with kids and her nanny quits last minute leaves her children at home by themselves so she's desperate for a nanny because she's like a surgeon so you know she works a lot and she needs people she needs a living nanny to be there with her girls and so he's recommended um, by friend by a friend who's a teacher and by like other people at the school who've had that him be their nanny and so they have an instant sexual attraction and he also but he's very much about his work but he tells her straight up front like i've never had been a nanny for someone i've been attractive to but you know i'm gonna keep my feelings to myself and i'm worried about the girls and she's like caught off guard and she eventually confesses her feelings to him too but they're like we don't need to do anything about it we're just in admitting that we're sexually attracted to each other. We're adults. And of course, you know, they're going to get together. But it was so sweet. Like, he was so sweet with the babies. I mean, they're like six-year-old twins. But, like, they loved him so much. I love their relationship. Even when they were, like, getting to know him and trying to trust him. Their real dad's an asshole. And there's a scene in that. And I love how he handled it. And I just, I don't even like children. But the way he was with them was so Rachel. oh my goodness and i loved ooh them and all of their sexy times i was like oh my god and i loved her friend her best friend was so amazing and oh, i don't know i just really have nothing to say but positive things i just loved i just loved all of it i loved the relationship i loved his relationship with the girls i loved his relationship with his family and her relationship with his family oh my god it was great it was just too short that's my complaint. And lastly, I read Bending the Rules by Christina C. Jones, which is the third Wright Brothers book. I've read the other two. And this one follows Justin and Sydney. I don't know how about his name. Okay. Justin and Tony. So Tony runs her own book publishing company. And Justin is a published author and so he is like a big time author with like a big time publisher and hers is like an independent press. She travels all around the world meeting authors and getting people to sign and so she hasn't lived at home for seven years um, and that's been also the same amount of time. Something happened between her and Justin and they haven't spoken since and they didn't date. They were just best friends. They grew up together since they were like seven or eight and they were best friends something happened we don't know in the beginning what happened and they haven't been on good terms since then and so she comes back for an event because her parents own a bookstore in this town and she's throwing the event 
um, they want her to help at the store for a little while and help with this event and it's actually for Justin for his like latest book release and so they eventually obviously it's a romance they're gonna end up together but I love their like <laughs> of course their banter together I love seeing the other Wright brothers and their girlfriends and then the Wright brothers their dad one of the girlfriends he's dating her mom and so we had a little bit of them so I love the whole family vibe it was really sweet um and then once we finally learn what happened I was like oh, okay that is at first I was like really girl but then when you finally get the whole details I was like oh, okay that is kind of fucked up but another thing that happened with this one was also that I was like by a certain time like okay you just need to forgive him now like I need you to stop being all up in your feelings and um both of them Tony and Justin were both in their heads too much instead of telling each other their feelings like they're both like I don't know I'm feeling something more than friends oh my god should I tell him should I tell her I'm feeling something more than friends I'm weird and when one would tell their feelings the other one wouldn't and I was like just say it just say it out loud but you know eventually they say those things and they're together and I love that but there was a frustrating part where I was like if y'all don't just fucking talk to each other I'm getting sick of this <laughs> but I still loved it and I know there's a novella a Christmas novella I think left so I'm gonna read that because I really love the family unit they're all so precious I think um pulling doubles which is the second one is still my favorite but I've loved all of them and I definitely will continue to read from Christina C Jones because I love her writing and um one thing I really did love was like like I liked in this one that we got I feel like we got more like banter between the brothers and I loved their relationship just felt really authentic uh to me reading that so those were all the books this has been going on for way too long I had a really good reading month it started out you know uh, and I don't know sometimes it'll feel like I'm not having a good month and then I'll look back and I'm like no I have really great books again still in a fantasy slump I don't know when I'm coming out of it anytime soon I've just been loving reading Reading things that aren't fantasy because they're one and done even when I want more there's not the like oh my god there's five more in this series or oh my god this book is 700 pages you know they've all been moderately sized 250 to 400 page books and I'm just loving it so I don't know maybe I'll get back to fantasy one day I hope soon I don't I don't know when but that was my wrap up I'm sorry if it was a little chaotic with baby but if you're you're not if you're not new here you should know that by now I'm sorry I look like this but <laughs> I also always look like this a mess anyway so tell me um one of your favorite reads and one of your least favorite reads from May and then do you have any books that you're excited about for June Tell me, tell me, tell me. Uh, thank you again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. My code OWENS will be here on the screen and linked down below to check that out if you would like to get 83% off of their VPN service. And I hope you all stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, sunscreened, informed, you know, trying to live your best life, reading the best books. Check out my description for all of that information. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.